How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. This is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck. And if my voice sounds different, it's because I am draining fluids. I got a cold over the weekend and it knocked me out. But the Steam Deck news doesn't stop. I'm only doing one video this week because there's some really cool stuff to talk about, including new hardware being teased by Valve in a new interview. And this whole situation about this new plugin for the Steam Deck being put on the Steam Store, but it really being too good to be true. All right, let's jump into this first news story here, which is all about Valve teasing new hardware. So if you didn't know, Valve has not been selling the Steam Deck in Australia. And the big first part of this update is that as of this November, like I think November 7th, or something like that, they're going to start officially selling the Steam Deck in Australia. And the like quick and dirty version of why it hasn't been available in Australia is because they have weird rules about selling products through your own store page. So Valve had to get a partner and figure all that stuff out, but it took them a really long time and now it's all figured out. But this interview is so frustrating because throughout the entire thing, they keep talking about working on new hardware that they're not ready to talk about. And then the interviewer is like just wanting to talk about selling the Steam Deck in Australia, but Valve is just repeatedly dropping hints throughout this interview, so I took out the parts that really mattered for this new segment. So the first time they teased it is when they said, now that Australia is part of our hardware shipping regions, it'll be for all of our future hardware as well. So that's just a simple tease saying that yes, they are working on more hardware after the Steam Deck OLED, which is great. I've seen a lot of people in the comments just like denying this, saying that the Steam Deck OLED is good enough forever. That is just obviously not true true games are going to advance and become harder to run so eventually we're going to have to have a new steam deck i know everyone hates hearing that but it's going to happen i mean valve is talking about it more in this article in these quotes i'm about to read there was a great question about battery life with the steam deck oled and how valve has kind of figured out a way to improve battery life through software updates with both the steam deck lcd and steam deck oled which i thought was really cool they said and there's also more changes coming up that i think it's a little too early to speak about but with the battery life it's not something that we'll ever feel like we'll be done with. We're going to constantly be trying to improve that because we think it's going to carry forward to the future models also. So that's just like confirming that they're working on a Steam Deck 2 and that is awesome. I know that they're saying they're not ready to talk about it and they've done this before. They say they're not ready to talk about stuff like a matter of months before they actually start announcing things. I personally think it is too soon for a Steam Deck 2. I don't think they're going to announce it at all this year. They could surprise us all and show it off in November, but I just think it's too soon, right? Like you only released the original Steam Deck two years ago. The Steam Deck OLED is only a year old. I understand that PC hardware moves a lot faster than uh, console hardware, but the Steam Deck is just as much of a console as it is a PC, and you've kind of sold everyone on it being a handheld console. So expecting people to pony up like four, five, six hundred dollars every year or every other year, I feel like it's just too quick of a pace because with the Steam Deck OLED, if they just added an OLED screen, that would be one thing, but as we know, they increased the quality of the hardware across the board with that thing, so it actually is a worthy the upgrade even though it costs a lot more than the original Steam Deck so if they're going to keep that cadence going forward and continue to improve the hardware as well as the software I feel like you kind of got to space it out a little bit more and I just be worried that whatever chip they use the custom chip that they develop with AMD I feel like it just hasn't been long enough for there to be a genuinely huge graphical and performance leap in terms of these chips so it really would still feel like a mid-gen upgrade for the Steam Deck versus a true successor. So yeah, they're talking about it now and just going off of like past interviews. They've been talking about stuff like this in this sneaky way a matter of months before they announce it. But I personally think the Steam Deck 2 is still a ways off. And for those of you who are weirdly unconvinced that Valve will continue to make custom chips with AMD for the Steam Deck 2, they also confirmed that in a big chunk of text. They said the thing that sets them apart from other competitors like the ROG Ally or the Legion Go or any of the other handhelds out there that run Windows is that they are partners with AMD. They specifically work with them to develop the chip and they get to optimize the software to take advantage of that one single chip and the weird sort of like advanced chip that they have for the Steam Deck OLED. It's the same chip 
it's just better like they improved the performance of it but it's really the same chip and going back to battery life they say that that partnership that they have with amd is why they've been able to improve battery life on the steam deck so much across the board it's because they have direct access to amd they're only working with one chip they can optimize specific games they can optimize anything they want because again it's not like a regular pc that has thousands of different components i always say thousands because i love when developers are like oh it's so hard to optimize for pc there's so many different combinations but like it's so limited really i mean there's there's a lot of different graphics cards out there but developers are dropping support for them left and right lately from older generations and when you get a good graphics card if as long as you don't want a cpu bottleneck you really only have a few choices for each one so it's like yeah there are way more options than a console but just throwing your hands up and saying like oh there's too many for us to really account for i don't buy that but that weird tangent aside i am excited to know that valve is working on a steam deck too this is my favorite platform i've been playing rogue trader i have talked about this before on the channel i'm not the biggest fan of games like baldur's gate 3 these like crpg style games and it turns out like with so many different genres of games it just takes the right game for me to just be like fully invested and totally addicted to it i downloaded rogue trader i started it up over the weekend when i had my cold i put about 12 hours into it which is more game time than i put into any game over like that short of a period of time in forever it is so damn good i love every bit of it and playing it on the steam deck with full controller support and they have a steam deck graphics preset that actually keeps you locked at 30 fps and doesn't make the game look like shit it's just like an incredible game for this handheld that i could play on my main gaming pc on my tv but i just love playing it on the handheld and throwing on amc fear fest and watching halloween 4 for the 600th time and then just to round out the interview they also mentioned new hardware again saying and in the same token we're going to take the learnings we have from steam deck and move it forward to the future of new hardware as well so we have things we're not talking about today one of those things that i hope they're not talking about is a tv based console i think they need to have some sort of steam deck that doesn't have a screen comes with a new version of the steam controller you can plug it into your tv and just it's a steam machine like when i was in high school and they had those ones that alienware had and i loved looking at it at the best buy kiosk and then i tried using the original version of steam os and i was like man this needs a lot of work and it needed so much work that they just abandoned it and completely rebuilt it from the ground up but the idea was really cool because i have so many steam games i would love to be able to just boot into that tv interface on a pc that is delegated to just be a console where i can mess with the settings i can play every game i want on the tv my saves will bounce between that my laptop and my steam deck and everything will just work great i feel like if they do do that that it shouldn't be just a steam deck repackaged i think they should figure out how to include at least a decently mid-grade sort of gpu that'll work well with the steam deck cpu like when you use the rog ally with the xg mobile it wasn't the greatest experience when that was my main pc setup but it was still cool having a 4090 on my desk that connected to a handheld and i could get like 60 fps in diablo 4 at 4k right i don't think they need to go full 4090 level but like you know maybe 40 60 40 70 level Level just so you can at least get 1080p or 1440p using upscalers like fsr i think that would just be a cool way to round out the entire steam deck experience this is something i talk about in ps ready all the time but i think sony's transition to making sure everything is built around the ps5 has paid dividends for them this generation and it makes the whole console ecosystem feel like more of an investment than just disparate thing where they've got a handheld they've got the ps vita tv they've got the ps3 the ps4 like everything's all split up now everything just just filters right through the ps5 whether it's the ps5 itself the psvr2 your pc games now get trophies the ps portal the eventual handheld that they're working on it just feels really cool and i feel like valve is being a little too conservative with how how much hardware they've released i think they could mess around a little bit more uh, starting with a controller and then work your way up to a tv box that is just called the steam machine or something like that bring that name back i thought it was really cool but yeah it was a really interesting interview if you want to know all about the ins and outs of getting this thing sold in australia it's on pushstart.au it is really interesting every time valve answers in the article they're like it's boring it's not boring it's just interesting to see why it was so difficult to actually sell the steam deck in that country because there's a huge gaming audience there you'd think the government would be like hey yeah sell your hardware here like it's fine with us and doesn't game newell like park his yacht by new zealand all the time wasn't he there through like all of the lockdowns and everything like that you'd think he could have gone over and just been like hey australia we're in his mask of course
source and saying, guys, let me get my new hardware that I'm working on sold here. It looks like they had some sort of breakdown in communication or something like that, but I'm glad they figured it out. Anyway, that brings us to the second news story here, which is about this amazing Steam Deck plugin that was going to make the jump to Steam and be integrated into your Steam Deck itself, but it really turned out to be too good to be true. So this is called Junk Store and the Decky plugin is still available. And what the plugin does is it'll scan your system for, you know, these Epic Game Store free games or your GOG games and automatically add them to Steam. But they came out with this new update where they were saying, hey, we're rebuilding this from the ground up and we're going to sell it on Steam for money. And when you buy it and install it on your PC or your Steam Deck, what it'll do is automatically let you add your games to Steam, but it'll also be able to let you link your Epic library or your GOG library to your Steam library. And you'll be able to see the games in your library and download them with the actual Steam client. So even though they're not real Steam games, they would be treated as such by the operating system. And they had a full Steam page that was explaining everything. They needed to get approval from Valve. And unfortunately it made it like, I think 12 hours before it was taken down. I'm like, there's no word on if it was Valve or Epic or, you know, someone else who decided to take this down. I would guess it's Epic. I feel like Epic is just trying to strong arm everyone into playing on their actual crappy launcher. So they probably got upset seeing it all linked through Steam. Uh, but yeah, there was another controversy with it where people were upset that they were going to charge money for this. I don't really care, honestly, if it's a good service that you're providing that like the actual stores aren't providing themselves, I feel like you're warranted to charge for it, but they were hinting that they were gonna charge like 10 or $15. And I think that's a little egregious. Deck filters, five bucks. And for what it does on your phone, I think is totally justified at that price point. I feel like 15 bucks for an app that just adds your games to Steam at the end of the day. I, I think that's just a little egregious, but I guess it doesn't matter anymore because it was removed from Steam. The Decky plugin is still available though, if you wanna go check that out. I just like, I don't really play a lot of the free games on Epic. I don't even have it installed on my main PC anymore because even if you turn it into not a startup app, it'll still start every time with the Epic Game Store services in the background. And I was looking at Task Manager and it looked like it was taking up way more resources than I wanted. So I was like, screw it. I don't need these free games. Every game I had on there goes on sale for at least five or 10 bucks in every Christmas sale. So like, yeah, while it is cool building out this library of free licenses for games on the Epic Game Store, if I actually wanted to play any of these, I feel like I could get them pretty cheaply to the point where I don't need to go through the hassle of having the Epic Game Store installed. But if you're someone out there, like you're in college or something, like this would have been, I would have been all over this in college because of the free games. Like I understand it completely. I hope they're able to figure out how to get this on the Steam Store again and not have it be taken down. But I really think they need to reevaluate that price point. I feel like $5 is the max you can charge for something like this. And you know, the best way to do it, I think that makes people actually want to give you money instead of be annoyed is to set up a donation page, right? Like make a website for it like Emudeck does and then make a Patreon or something and then say, hey, if you like this service, we developed it for free. If you wanna to toss us some cash, we have a donation link set up, here you go. I feel like that's just the most, not ethical way to do it, just the, the coolest way to do it, right? Like don't force people to pay for it, but give them the option to tip you if they want to. But yeah, guys, that's all I've got for you in today's video. I'm gonna go edit this and lay on the couch and play some Rogue Trader. I hope you're having a great week. I will see you next week here on Deck Ready. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.